Hello, how are you doing? Right, today we're going to tie a fuzzy minnow. Now I've been using this fly for a couple of months actually, but I've not tied it with strong fuzzy fiber. I tied it with uh, Kanakalong uh, and EP fiber, but I wasn't really happy with both. So I've tried it with strong fuzzy and I much prefer it. Uh, strong fuzzy is a little bit firmer than EP, so it doesn't tangle. And that's the point of this fly really. It's a non-fouling fly. Um, and the idea of the, the fuzzy type head and the short fibers in the head, I saw in um, Bob Popovic's flay designs and the fly is tied by Johnny Kings. So credit to him for that idea. And I mean, it's nothing new. Uh, I know the, um, the fly fishers in Europe, especially for pike, uh, like to tie flies very similar to this, uh, uh, in Holland particularly. Um, but yeah, so let's uh, stop yapping on and uh, start tying this fly. In advice, we've got an NS172 Curve Gamma Rus made by Arex. And for thread, we're going to be using GSP100. So we're going to lay a thread base down. don't have to use GSP. Um, the reason I'm using it is because we're forming a dubbing loop and I find because of the low stretch it just makes things a little bit easier to spin up. So add some super glue or some glue of your choice and this is liquid fusion. Now we're going to take some uh, strung fuzzy fiber in white and take a healthy healthy clump of this we're going to trim it back anyway so probably around about that much in thickness now we're looking for a length of say four inches cut that to size and keep the excess and so we now now need to taper this otherwise just it just speeds up rather than having to taper it after you've cut so it's always worth tapering beforehand so just pull pull the fibers through, give it a roll, check the other end, give it a pull through. That looks about right. Now we're going to tie this on 40, 60. So 40 on the bottom, about 60 on the rear. Depends how long you want the tail. I'm tying these around two and a half, three inches in size. And tie that down. Next, we're taking some Hedron Polar Flash in silver. Now you don't want many, much, um, many strands in this because I'm fishing these for uh, for a few trips. I've noticed the less less the better, but it's, it creates a nice because we're creating an inner flash here. It creates a nice sort of lateral line in the fly. Gives it a bit more interest as well. Now you don't have to use the flash, you can emit flash completely, but I like to put a little bit in here. Again, 60, uh, 40-60, tie that down on top. Now bring everything back. I've got some flash that's got a mind of its own at the moment, but that will straighten up later. Now tie that down over the top. There's your tail done. Come forward to lock that, create a dubbing loop. And then take that dubbing loop all the way back to where you tie down the tail and then bring the thread forwards to the eye. Now, what we need to do is put our tool in to lock it in place. Now I've lost my wax, so I'm using, I'm improvising. So we all know what this is. Just a little bit of that on there. We just need the need something to, to hold the, the materials when we spin it up. So um, cheap Pritt stick is a, a good alternative. Now we're taking some more strong fuzzy fiber and we're gonna cutting it into two inch, inch and a half, uh, inch and a half sections. I'm just doing this on my, my base. So we want the longer fibers sort of 
nearer the front of the doubling loop to form the body and we're going to get shorter as we get nearer the head so I'm just taking the same clump that I left earlier to create that create that um, material for the dubbing loop. So I'm just laying that on my pedestal, you can't see this. So I'm taking some Angelina fiber, you pick this up really cheap. This is like a, I think it's silver iris or something color wise. So it's purples and greens and silvers in there. So we're laying that on top of the dubbing loop material and we're taking all our materials. And we're gonna place that straight in. And we're gonna sort of manipulate it to where we want it. I've got some knotted material here, so I'm just going to take that out. There we go. So spread it all round. Get rid of that. Get rid of any knots you can see. Otherwise it will mess things up. And we're going to hold tight and we're going to spin this up. Take it slowly at the beginning. We're going to come through this with a, a needle in a minute anyway. Just spin that up. Any fibers catching the hook, just pull them back. There we go. I'll we'll take our needle. So it's worth taking your time with this process just to get everything even. And come in with your needle and pull out any wrap fibers. Like that. Of spending your time doing this. Give it another spin to make sure everything's locked in place. Again, okay, come with the, through with your needle, separate them. Now, I've played with different materials here. I've used Canacalon, um, EP fibers. I mean, they all spin okay. EP fibers is a bit tricky. It's quite a soft. It's a bit softer than strong fuzzy fiber. So I set, but I settled on strong fuzzy because I find it spins better and creates that stiffness that I'm looking for. There we go. Now wrap those fibers back. And before we wrap down, we need to add some glue to the base of this, just to give it some extra security. Again, I'm using liquid fusion. You can use Zappa Gap, although liquid fusion might be better because you get a little bit more time. And it's not as messy. Oh, and it's solvent free. So if you have any problems of allergic reactions to glues like I do, it's worth investing in some of that stuff. wrap it around it's a bit of a messy job this one but we'll do our best for the camera just keep pulling it through until we get closer to the eye take my needle there I can see a lot of material wrapped already so I'm just going to quickly separate it before I go again Keep coming down. Now you could use your your bobbin holder if you prefer to do it that way. Oh, I don't mind doing it this way. This way is fine for me. It's, I'm more comfortable. So it's whatever you're comfortable with. I think that's probably about right. So I'm just going to tie that last bit down. I pull this tight and your bobbin tight. A few wraps over the top to lock everything in place. And then Bring everything back, tie down, a few wraps, tight wraps. Cut off the excess, tight as you can. And wet finish. Take your needle and just come through the head to make sure all those materials are free and not jamming underneath the wraps. There we 
we go. Now it looks a bit of a mess at the moment, so we're going to come in with the scissors now and start doing some trimming. Now what I like to do is just first trim in, in the vise. Take, don't go too short just yet. Just start shaping this to how you want, but slightly larger. Now you could use a curved scissors if it helps you. Uh, I've very rarely use them, so I don't ever own one. So I'm just making do of the standard, standard scissors. Now you form it into the shape you want. I like to have mine fairly rounded, but maybe a little bit narrower as you look at it front on where the eyes go. Now to make things a little bit easier under the body, I like to take it out and just give it a give it a trim. Now the idea of this fly obviously as, as I've said in the intro is it's a non-fouling fly. So we need to make sure there's no long fibers underneath the the hook bend. Now you can spend a lot of time shaping this if you want, taking your time. Um, I tend to, but for this we're, we're just going to be a little bit um, less caring about trimming it to exactly how we want. I just want to give you the idea of what it, what's involved. I don't want to bore you with constant trimming here, so I'm just going to finish up in a second. I think that will do for the time being. Let's put that back in the vise. It might need a little bit more trimming. Let's come back to it in a minute. So next step is to just give the give the back some colour. So most big fish have a slightly darker back. So we're just going to use a sharpie pen just to colour it up. And of course this isn't, I mean it's a permanent marker but it does fade over time so you just need to come back. If you fish these flies a lot, to come back and um, give it some more colour later on. If that makes sense. Just mark it up. I'm just using a grey for this one. Um, it's supposed to be like a little roach or a bleak. Plenty of those in, in the water. Come and trim it a bit more. We can tie that up later. And next step is to add some eyes. So I'm just using some tape eyes. I think these are I'm not sure what size they are, five, five or six millimetre, not very big. And we just need to put some, some gel glue down. So I'm just putting some gel glue where they're going to go on each side. I'm going to take some eyes, place them on top. Keep them about two or three mil from the, uh, the uh, the hook eye, just let it just look a bit better on this style of fly. And do the same on the other side. Like that, and the last step, well not quite the last step because we need to sort this tail out a little bit. But we're going to add some, like a gill plate, a bit of orange in here. a nice finishing touch. Now last step is to, a um, well, second last step, you need to put some, protect the eyes with some Deer Creek Fine Flex or other UV resins. I prefer this one, this is tack free. Um, once you've done that, what I like to do is just straighten that fibers a little bit of the tail. So what we need to do is get your favorite mug and just dip the fly about an inch, inch and a half into the mug and just leave it for a few seconds. And then take it out and just, just pull it straight until those fibers start to straighten. If they're not straight enough, just put it in again. And there we go. That is a fuzzy minnow. 
thanks for watching and um, i'll see you on the next video